ADOS, proud sponsors of ADOS Addicted to Fishing. I'm Nikki Sindon, and since I could hold a handline, I have been addicted to fishing. Whether it's stray lining for snapper, jigging for kingfish, dropping deep for harpooka, or jumping in and going spearfishing, I love it all. each week as I road trip around the country, travelling to both New Zealand's most iconic fishing destinations and stepping off the beaten track to show just how good Kiwi fishing really is. Whether it's a girls trip, fishing with a local or riding solo, I am on a constant quest to satisfy my insatiable fishing addiction. Welcome to ADOS Addicted to Fishing this week. Now you may remember from a couple of shows ago, our mates at Qantas were kind enough to send us across the ditch to discover all that Aussie fishing has to offer. Arno Bay is a small fishing and tourist town on the east coast of the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia. Our King George Whiting are pretty much dynamite all year round, but at, at some stage of the year they've got to breed and spawn. It's, really, it's only about a, a 10 day window and it's getting pretty close to that time of year now, so we could be a bit stiff on the King George Whiting, so we might be a bit unlucky there, but let's hope, let's hope we go all right. My favourite of all the fishing is yellowfin whiting or a sam whiting or a silver whiting. They've got a, a lot of different names. They don't grow huge, you know, 30, 30 to 35 centimetre fish, um, but you catch them in about one foot of water and it's very visual. You, know, you, you put waders on, you put a catch bag on over your shoulder, you, you strap your bait holder in. Uh, you get out of the car and there might be two of you, there might be, you might be on your own, there might be eight of you, and you just fan out and you go looking for the fish and when you find them, um, they're quite often in really big schools, so it's, you know, it's nothing to catch 20 fish in 20 minutes. It's, yeah, it's probably my favourite form of fishing. Right, so we just dropped the pick here. Why are we here, Faz? Oh, it's just a random spot. Just a random spot. A random GPS spot that you gave me to punch it? Yeah. <laughs> with our whiting and squid in these shallow grounds, you have your, like, your known spots. So you, some days you might get lucky and find the fish on the first drop. Mm -hmm. Some days it might take you 20 drops till you find a fish. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just a, it's one of your known grounds. So it's the closest to the ramp. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a crack. OK, cool. So. What are we going to use for bait? Now, you just, you have to remember that I've literally never even seen a whiting except yeah. for crumbed on a plate next to a salad. So, um, that, pretty that, excited about catching one of those. These are the premium South Australian fish. Everyone, everyone comes down to Bay to catch a snapper. That's what we're, we're famous for. But the locals, this is all we chase, is the, is the King George whiting. We use a Pat Noster rig, which you'll, you'll see in a minute. And yeah. um, for bait, we use cockles or pippies. Depends what state you're from or country, what you call them. Or my favourite bait's the green prawn, which is on the on the esky there. You're going to waste a prawn? Yeah. Bait. Yeah, we, it, we get plenty of them. These fish must be really good. Yeah, no, nah, the whiting are, <laughs> are pretty nice. Um, or squid, if they're really on the chew, you'll put squid on for bait because that's a little bit tougher and it'll stay on. So you, you can catch multiple fish on the one bait. Pre-make all our rigs before you get out. Okay. Very high tech, organised. Well, well oiled machine. The uh, hooks seem to have quite a long shank there. Yeah, it just makes it easier because quite often they will swallow the hook, the whiting. They're pretty okay. cagey fish. But yeah, it's a pretty simple rig. That's that's all you need. And then a small bit of prawn. The King George whiting's only got a small mouth, so you don't want a, a real big piece of bait. Mm -hmm. So you can see, it's sort of about the size of your thumbnail. It's yeah, not, okay. not a real, not a real huge piece. And then it's just yeah, thread it, thread it on your hook, and that one's ready to go. Most of your whiting grounds will hold a few squid. So we, we throw a squid jag on the swivel, so you're multitasking. We are. Yeah. yeah. 
Anyone would think you're a female no, fan. No, no, I, <laughs> I didn't come up with the idea, but I'll claim it. <laughs> cool. And that's about it. You were fishing in 40, 40 feet of water or 12 metres, and the fish are always on the bottom. They're not, they won't sit mid-water or top water, you King George, so you, they're pretty much drop down drop down until you hit the bottom and the key is trying to feel your weight all the time on the bottom. Okay. You don't, uh, yeah, you don't want to have a loose line. Oh, we've got a squid. Yes, we've got a squid. Calamari for dinner tonight. I just felt something tugging on my line. I thought, is it? Is it not? It's a squid. Gosh, that didn't, uh, that didn't take long. That's a cracking, cracking squid, eh? That's that is a yeah. delicious specimen right there. Absolute ripper. Wow, beautiful southern, colours. Southern calamari. Southern yeah. calamari. Yeah. Beautiful to eat, and very good whiting bait when they're fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Gosh, that that literally hit the bottom, and then it just went boom, 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 yeah. and I thought. They're pretty aggressive, okay. these fellas. If they're there, yeah. there's no, uh, no mucking around. No. no match on, and they're good. That's fantastic. Yep. Great. Well, should we um, put them on ice, or should we put them in the bin? Uh, we'll put them in the in the water and keep him fresh. Okay. Fresh for the minute. Yeah. Drop drop your line till you till you hit the bottom. Now we've got loose line, so you know you're, you're on the bottom. Flick your bail arm and then slowly retrieve until you can just feel your weight on the bottom. And then with with your squid, it'll be a dull. A dull pulse, they, they sort of catch themselves, they'll latch on. Whereas the whiting, sometimes you'll just see the tip of your rod just do a little tiny, tiny move or you'll feel a really good bite and then it's like one good strike, set your hook and then take your time to, to wind your fish in. Not as good as yours, <laughs> but it's not too bad. Yeah, not just, as good. Just a nice size, yeah. That's his long tentacle or his candle. We use that for whiting bait, all the rest you can use for whiting bait as well. But they're, uh, that's what we call the flaps of the body and the head, and that's all good to eat. After the break, we get stuck into some King George whiting, and then we try our luck at catching some of South Australia's blue swimmer crabs. This week, we're back in Arno Bay with our mate Fuzz from Fuzzles Fishing Adventures. Our mates at Inverloch Marine have sorted us out with an extreme rope to use and we're out in the shallows targeting squid and the elusive King George Whiting. We've just got a, a, a huge variety of species. Uh, snoop, whiting, garfish, crabs, squid, cuttlefish. Uh, we go diving for abalone. So yeah, the, the snapper are what the, the town's really known for, but yeah, the locals, we sort of chase everything else, I guess. This is a whiting. It definitely doesn't feel like a squid. Not that I actually know what a whiting is, per se. Uh, that's a whiting. Well done. Woohoo! Oh, he's a good size. Yep, that is a cracker. Well done. <laughs> Five minutes in uh, Arna Bay and you get a squid and a whiting. You're going all right. I like Arno Bay. Might have to it's, move here. It is. Oh, he's come off all right. That's a ripper size. Best way to handle him, everyone makes a mistake, but the best way is to cover his eyes yeah. off the hook because they're, they're quite a slimy fish. Okay. So they'll, they'll slide out of your hands and you'll see people hold the fish and out it goes out the side of the boat. Yeah, so, yeah, much. just a nice firm grip over his eyes. And that one is probably about 37, 38 centimetres. So, and our, legal, our legal's 32. Like aggressive little fish, aren't they, to catch? That's what we what that's what we call a big fat kyoda. Can you say that? It's big, a big fat kyoda. Big fat kyoda. <laughs> <laughs> One more squid, I reckon. You reckon? Yeah. Really enough for tea. Three or four. We want one each, aren't we? Another tasty resident. Yeah. A good day we get half a dozen to a dozen, maybe. So we've done pretty well to get three three pretty quick. And he just, yeah, they're just a nice size. Oh, oh, oh. oh. A, I think it might be a big cuttlefish, this really? one. Really? Yeah. It is a cuttlefish. It's 
species is the, is the squid or the southern calamari, but just a little bit more tender and uh, a little bit sweeter to eat. Okay. Big nasty beak on him. Yeah. <laughs> and they hold way more ink than what the, what the squid do. And I reckon he's still got a little bit in him. Yeah, he looks like he's just like waiting for the right moment. No, 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 no I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta... What do we do with them? Do we use them they, for bait? Do we eat yeah, them? Same, same as the squid. These, these are what they call candles. Uh, the, the, they're two long white ones, which he's, he's retracted back in his head, but we'll see later when he dies. Okay. We'll pull them out, and they're what you, they call the candles because they look like a big, big long white candle, and that's oh. that's the ultimate uh, bait for King George Whiting. But they're also beautiful to eat, and okay. sometimes on the water you just see. Oh, oh there, there you go. goes. That's what we didn't want. Have a look at that mess. <laughs> Glad it's not my boat. <laughs> You're not on cleaning duty tonight, so it's all right. <laughs> oh. Nothing quietens a man down more than being sprayed by cuttlefish ink. It also brings us to the end of our first day's fishing, and tomorrow we go on a blue swimmer crab hunt. A lot of oyster boats coming out of here. Yeah, Cow's pretty famous for its uh, oyster fisheries and its peak hour at the minute this morning. Very busy. Yeah. I've noticed that all of them have twin Hondas on the back. Yeah, they love the Hondas, the boys down here, and uh, it tells you something, doesn't it, when, they, uh, when the industry uh, uses the product, it's usually pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Pretty smooth ride out, Nicky. Yeah, yeah, these extreme boats are a next level above. They're really, really good boats. I'll be able to do some circle work around these tinnies and stir them up in a minute. <laughs> you certainly will. All right, so we've just pulled up here three and a half metres. Yeah, it's pretty shallow. It's not real hard need. work, yeah. Now's the... Uh, well-oiled machine, you get the, get the bait pots out, load them up, drop them in the pots, zip tie them, yep. attach the rope, the boys, and heave them out the back, and hopefully in 10 or 15 minutes we'll be uh, pulling some nice big blue swimmers in. Put me to work, Fuzz, right. tell me what to do, teach I'm, me. I'm, I'm loving this. Just uh, <laughs> get the baits in the buckets to catch. Great. The pots are here. Some bait in there? Yeah. yeah. Any kind of bait? Well, we used to use kangaroo meat and, um, meat offal, but you're not allowed to use it anymore for some reason, I, I don't know, but so yeah, yeah you, can, you, you can only use fish product, but we throw, try and give it a bit of a full buffet. So we've got whiting frame there and I'll throw a bit of stinky prawn and pilch it in there. A couple of zip strips. Straight. Oh, zip strips? Zip strips, cable ties. In New Zealand we call them cable ties. Clip onto the, uh, onto your top. Yep. So your rope's attached, and this is a fairly important bit. Put in the buoy arm. A buoy. The buoy. A buoy. The buoy. Yeah. Right, so just pick it up and... Yeah, yeah. Whiz bang over it. the side again, Niggy. Whiz bang you'll be, over you'll the side. Be, you'll, be, you'll be an expert at this in another 10 minutes. <laughs> cool. I can see the bottom. Yep, perfect. The daily bag limit per person is 20, which is a combined limit with sand crabs, and the daily boat limit is 60. This bag limit is pretty generous, but it doesn't mean that we have to take all that catch just because we can. It will be nice if future generations were able to catch blue swimmer crabs as well. Tackle tips and tactics, brought to you by Smart Marine. Our mates over at ADOS have come up with something pretty cool. Obviously you all know that ADOS, our naming rights sponsor, is a multi-purpose spray adhesive glue. But now they've come up with stuff off which gets this stuff off. It also gets ink, graffiti, lots of different things off porous surfaces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some ADOS glue on the carpet and we're gonna get it off. But this stuff here, it turns to gel and then it's able to be peeled off. Let's have a go. Ideal for use on metal, brick, stone, concrete, glass, wood, and fabric, including carpet. Right, so now we're just gonna leave that for 10 minutes for it to soak in and absorb the ADOS glue. All right, so that's really lifted. Now, all we do is we just wipe it away. Look at that. Like new. ADOS, stuff off. For all your fishing needs, 
head on down to your local Smart Marine store. Just after the break, we pull up our pots and see if we've hit the jackpot. Oh, we go on! That's what we're after. Here we are in Arno Bay in the Eyre Peninsula of South Australia. Yesterday we hooked into some squid and King George whiting, well and now we're targeting blue swimmer crabs with crab nets. What's your favourite way to eat these crabs? Uh, there's a few few different ways. Just just boiled in seawater and chilled down on ice, and eat them eat them pretty much straight away. That's that's pretty simple, tasty way to eat them. But uh, the local public and and cow cooks up a pretty mean chilli crab and that uh, hopefully we get enough and we'll be able to go in and it'll cook some chilli crab up for us. All right, that's the last one in. Now we wait? No, 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 straight into it. Now motor back around, we work out which is the best way to go, probably into the breeze and pull them from that side of the boat and happy days. We should have a crab in there by now. Ooh, OK, let's do it. Fuzz was not wrong. It seems the local blue swimmer crabs could not resist today's menu. Dimmer stretches. Yeah, we'll get these puppies there. ready. Yeah, 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 no, you'll, you'll get a fair workout. <laughs> right, it's like Christmas. See what we got. Oh. We got one. <laughs> Woohoo! That's what we're after. Yeah. Not bad. One pool, one crab. That's a little velvet crab. That one. They're no, oh. they're no good. But these are the, uh, these are the ones we're after. And that's a nice, nice sized blue swimmer crab. But you always grab them from behind. From behind? Yeah, the back. Because these uh, these nipples will take a good chunk out of you. This area must just be absolutely littered yeah, with these. I'd hate to pull the plug and, and uh, just see what is on the bottom. There must be just thousands of them. There must be. Yeah, because there's a lot, lot come out each day. I love their colours. They're such um, beautiful, bright colours. They must obviously camouflage pretty well down there. Yeah, they, they're just the vacuum cleaners of the ocean. They just clean up all the scraps on the bottom. Off to the next part. In the chilli bin. And that's another important thing. Oh, bit. the chilli bin. In the chilli bin. In the chilli bin. Is uh, straight on the ice. Straight on the ice, yeah. And there's a rigor mortis sets in with them. So they, if they're on ice slurry, they, uh, yeah. yeah, they go to sleep pretty quick and their flesh sets beautiful. So that's pot number one. Apparently I'm already trainee of the month. Yeah, one from one, you're going all right. One from one. Woo! Well, this one feels a bit heavier. Yeah, he got weight. There we go. Ah, uh, we got... Yes, two, two from two. two. Woohoo! And a little velvetys, another couple of velvetys. When I reach over and I grab it, I've got to pull it in real quick, but you can feel them. Like when you, when the rope comes tight, you can feel yeah. the, whether there's a crab in there or not. Yes, I can see it. Oh, I can see one. Oh, yes, that's a cracker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a size limit on them. What, what, this is what we call the carapace across the front here. Okay. And so you measure from the inner from there to there. Yep. So you put your measurer in there, and oh, if wow. that, there's, your legal, well there's your legal size crab. So yeah, he's a good centimetre or two. The real refined technique. Wow, oh, look at hey. that. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> First double header, well done. So what's that? Five crabs from four? Four, four nets, that's good going. One. Oh, you like seeing that colour? <laughs> Another, oh, you got one on the outside. Oh, we got one on the outside, yeah. get him in. Ah. Yeah. Freak of nature. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's all right, we're good. Bit of, bit of chaos there. Yeah. <laughs> that's a beauty. Woohoo. What about that one? Double header. Yay, two more. Another double. <laughs> They're pretty small though, we better measure these. Yeah, he's well legal, Nicky. No worries. Perfect. Oh, we've got a little dog shark. Bit of bycatch. Bit of bycatch. We'll let him go. Cool little critters, aren't they? Oh, they're wild. Prehistoric looking things. Yeah. And the tastiest thing we've got in South Australia out of the water. Australia seems to have a lot of prehistoric looking creatures. Like, <laughs> you know, you've got the emu, kangaroo. Crocodiles. Crocodiles, yeah. Yeah, Australian. yeah, yeah. Australian men. <laughs> All right. Looking forward to eating this one. The one that yeah, knocked yeah. me. Yeah, you... <laughs> Get my revenge on him later. All right, should we pop him in the bin? Yeah, well done. Back in the ice slurry and back on shore. With a bin of South Australia's finest, we head back to shore. 
lucky for us, Fuzz's uncle runs the Franklin Harbour Hotel. They get busy preparing the crabs. I can't wait to see what he's got in store for us this time, because it doesn't get any fresher than this. Uncle Brenton also prepares the squid that we caught late yesterday. As simple as that, some fresh herbs and spices and straight into a hot wok. It doesn't take long before this delicious beast is ready. Oh, what a good day. It's hard work, this crabbing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's the, the squid, the crabbing, our little whiting. Beautiful part of the world. Thank you. Thanks, Uncle. Right. Clear the deck, because it's going to be a, a little bit uh, a little bit turned up here in a minute with a bit of luck. OK. Looking forward to seeing what they do with those crabs. Oh, it's... Uncle cooks the best chilli crab in the world. Fantastic. Well, hey, thanks so much for coming out with us, Fuzz. Wow. Crabs. Just a couple. I don't think we're going to be able to smash through all of these. Uh, we'll, we'll put a fair dent in it. OK. Well, hey, look, I hope that you've enjoyed watching the show this week from all of us here at Ados Addictive Fishing. And thank you, Fuzz. Welcome, Nikki. Absolute pleasure. Had a ball. That's been amazing. And we'll see you next week. All right. Let's get stuck in. We trust Qantas to fly us to South Australia and back home again safely. A big cheers to our mates at Envelope Marine for sorting us out with an extreme boat. And this is where we choose to stay when visiting Arno Bay. To book your fishing adventure with Fuzzle from Fuzzle's Fishing Adventures, just go to www.fuzzles-fishing.com. Gear, Care and Catch, brought to you by Tradezone. Here we are at Trade Zone in Napier. Let's go in and see Todd and the team. Hey, Toddy. Hey, Nikki. What are you up to? Um, well, I've got a problem. I've got some seized nuts. Oh, crikey. Are they uh, totally seized? They're totally seized. Oh, how big are they? They're, they're pretty big. OK. Probably at the end of the day, you're going to have to get some heat into those to get them off. That's okay. probably the only way of getting that off successfully. Yeah, yeah the salt water's just got on there. Yeah, heat. So probably what I suggest is burns a um, it's a low-cost way of getting heat into things. Tip temperature gets up to 2,000 degrees. Mm -hmm. You can buy the canisters as a separate item. They are really, really groovy, these. They're simple to use. Adjustable flame. Let your finger off. Stops automatically. Nice and safe. Yeah. Got a lock on it, so you can't get it to go yep. once you get the lock on. You can just remove the canister really simply once it's empty. Job done. Throw that in the bin. New canister. Back on she goes. So there, it's a really good way of um, heating stuff without spending a lot of money. I can probably do my creme brulee at home. <laughs> not, with, not with this, you'd burn it. That's what you need for your creme ah. brulee. <laughs> a little mini torch. So same thing, lots of safety features, lock on it. Ideal for doing your ropes on the boat. Yeah, true, yeah. Burning the ends. Um, so they're the two really good items that I suggest that you have. OK, cool. Well, I'll take one of each of those. Sweet. Let's Sweet. do it. Cheers. For all your engineering needs, head in store or order online at www.tradezone.co.nz. Check out our YouTube page for tips, tricks and entire episodes of every season. And like us on Facebook to keep up to date with competitions and all your fishing news. ADOS, addicted to fishing, is proud to be with Extreme Boats, powered by Honda Marine. We tow it around in our custom-built cam trailer on the back of our Ford Ranger. Smart Marine supply us with our Shimano Tackle, and we find the best fishing spots with our Furuno. We maintain our gear using 10 tools and clean up using Bosch hot water products supplied by our local Chester's Plumbing Store. We keep up to date thanks to New Zealand Fishing News magazine and it all sticks together thanks to ADOS.